Alright, what's up everybody? Um, let's see, make sure I get this up. Alright, cool. There we are. Let's see what's happening. Can you see what's happening? I can see what's happening. Cool. <clears throat> so here we are. We have our painting. Uh, actually, I, I can't see what's happening. I lied. There we go. Uh, there we go. So, okay, we have our painting here. And um, we're going to go ahead and work up towards the top. So, let's go ahead and move this camera from where it was last time. Right. Up to about there. So, then we can zoom in. And we're going to start with this guy right here, right in the center today. So, you kind of see his outline, his ribs, and his mouth and all that so we're gonna start going up this way and then we'll work our way around uh, once we get him all established here so I already kind of poured in some paint uh, one thing I forgot to go over last time um, just in order to if you want to do a canvas like this so you seen me mix up the paint last time right and so all I did was uh, in order to preserve that paint that I had mixed I just covered up the top with some tape, you know, just make sure the tape seals up all the way around and kind of just left it here. Came in today, pre-mixed it, you know, added just a tiny bit more reducer to it and, and poured some of the airbrush and we're good to go. So, yeah. So just in case you're wondering or if, you know, if you want to preserve a little paint for a little while, Obviously, I wouldn't keep it like that for a long, long time, but since we're just gonna need the black for this painting, that'll work. What's up, Kelly? <laughs> really? I got it. What's up, Carrie? How's it going? Mr. Fit and Funny, how's it going? Cool, so anyway, let's get started here. And we're just gonna start with... Start with clearing out this airbrush. good on the wet coast on the wet coast <laughs> uh hot hello hello how's it going what's up eric todd how's it going t-o double d mm -hmm. i see you eric todd i see you a lot in Vancouver oh yeah okay that makes sense I see now makes total sense uh, there you go that's that's the one I want right there so.
How often do you do a full breakdown cleaning of your airbrush? What's your airbrush? I want to... Yeah, so this is the Iwata Eclipse I'm using right now. How often do I like really break it down and clean it? And it's probably only when it needs it. So not not very often. Um, usually, like, you know, it's all about keeping them clean all the time. <clears throat> now you'll see some paint stains on the outside. I, I, to me, I kind of like the, the endearing, messy look on the outside. But I flush these out and clean these uh like you know the the cup and the nozzle and the needle are kind of always clean so it's kind of that thing of if you don't get it dirty if you don't mess it up then there's no reason to really keep breaking it down and cleaning it's all about maintenance more than anything kind of way to put it Don't do good maintenance. You know, then it's gonna be rough. You're probably gonna have, end up, you know, having to really clean it more often if you do a poor job of just cleaning it out after you're done. That's the best way to describe it. What's up, James? How's it going? Hell yeah. What's up, Udo? I have weight on you today. <laughs> cool. Thank you for waiting. What's up, Tap Grind? Your comp very busy. What? What? What?
Oh, you mean like the composition of everything that's happening? Yes. Yes. This is this is exactly. You know, if, if I just made a simple design, then you know, just, I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't even know how to say it, but I wouldn't even feel right trying to like print it onto a shirt. The whole point is to have something really nice in it. see it I want them to go whoa look at that that's cool <laughs> so all right so I think we got it all in here Oh, the compressor. Okay, yeah. Not too bad. Once we move it over there, you won't even hear it. So, and right now we're we're kind of working out like it's like 25. Uh, once we actually start doing some colors and stuff, we're gonna really lower the pressure down. It's not really gonna kick on that often. But it's a lot better than hearing the big big compressor that all the regulars know. <laughs> the big compressor shakes your soul through the phone. Yes, sir, it does. Um, but yeah, hopefully once we move this, because this is a silent compressor, but once we move it into the cabinet over there, won't even hear it. it won't even be a thing. <laughs> I like it. I like your description though, it shakes your soul through the phone. Now imagine if you were watching on TV. I need to learn to get my reduction so I can paint like you. Nah, I mean, sure, we didn't even reduce the paint all that crazy or nothing like that. This is just a quick reduction and this is just a sketch. Once we get to the actual you know, painting, we're, we're gonna really get a little crazy with it, a little more detail. I don't expect this painting to be done probably get into December, so. I'm gonna really take my time with it. Now, if I wanted to, I could sit on here and just jam on it all day long. But part of the thing for me right now is for you guys to come along with the journey for it. So the, the more that I work on it, you know, I want to be live so that the whole journey for this painting will be, um, you know, recorded on the live streams. And maybe you guys will give me input, right? Because it, it is a Skull Squad design. So, you know, if you guys give me input, it, it you know, it's going to really take the whole Skull Squad thing to the next level. So. I do like how fast this compressor fills up. It's like freaking. 
Done. <laughs> Hello, de la Belgique. Uh, Emmanuel, hello. Hello, Emmanuel. What's up, Mark? Sat here in the UK spraying paint. Hell yeah. Good luck to you, sir, in your, in your spray painting. I hope you mean airbrushing, but you know, good luck to you either way. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a good day. It's Sunday where I am. Uh, I took a break from working on the house to come out here and go live for you guys. Get a little bit more work done on this. I actually needed I needed to come back out here because I had already reduced the paint. And I'm trying to use this black before it dries up in the cup and, and all that. So I needed to come live. But I did take a break from working on the house. Uh, primo, que pasa? Que pasa, Mufasa? Como estas? Que rollo? Que rollo, mi gente? Como le va? What's up, Chris? How's it going, man? I'm actually staring at your cup right here. I'm not going to show you what it looks like finished. Um, I haven't cleared it yet, but I added some more stuff to it. But I want kind of the, the other stuff to be a surprise for when you get it. And is that same, same address still good? Should be good, right? How much paint do you think you have used so far? So, here, I'll, I'll go out of this right here. I mixed up, um, well, the top is one, for, like a like a half an ounce of paint is and what I mixed up, and there's still quite a bit left in the cup. So I haven't used all that much half an ounce is what I mixed so technically I've used that much because I won't be able to put that back into the main paint you know into the main paint container like I'm not gonna put that reduced black back into the into the container of nice regular black so technically a half an ounce of black but Gonna use a lot more than that because we're gonna still do colors and yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. I might do some candy colors in here just to get some really good stuff. Like how I was talking about last time, um, is I want to give, you know, give the skulls and the skeletons a nice, cool gray and, and white and you know maybe some cream colored in there. Um, but I do want to give them like a highlight from one color and a highlight from the other side. So like on one side, I was thinking maybe doing like like a red or, or like a, you know, just a nice bright pink or something like that on one side and then maybe doing like a green or a blue on the other side. Maybe doing different, you know, uh, things here. Uh, but we do have these flames coming up in the middle, right? So all these little flames. Maybe we'll do some highlights coming off of those. That kind of thing. We have this... this uh, desert scene so if we have some yellow and like this is yellow maybe we'll do some yellow kind of highlights and stuff onto the skulls uh you know based off of the based off of the lights that are available obviously it wouldn't make any sense because this is way back there but it'll just make sense for the painting just to give it that extra flair and make it look really good so that's kind of what i'm going for jessica is going to get you for slacking up on your housework. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. We took a break from it. So I even told her, I'm going to take a break from this to go live. She said, okay. So she can't get angry. 
She's in there right now having breakfast, taking her own break because we've been we've been at it. We're gonna replace the the carpet and stuff in the other rooms, and we're we'll painting them and stuff. And uh, yeah, you know us, uh, typical fashion. We gotta try to do as much as the labor ourselves because we're cheap like that, you know. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Please understand, even um, if I'm not a good at English. I'm, I'll try my best to understand, but sometimes, uh, you know, it's hard. Translations are hard sometimes, so I'll try my best. You have not moved. Cool, cool. Hey, you never know, man. Housing market's crazy right now. Some people be moving. Some people be doing stuff. You know, I don't know how much longer that's going to last. I don't know. We'll see. finish up and round out the top here. So we're at the very tippity top now of our painting. So if I zoom you out, we can get a good look. We started down, we started at the bottom and now we're here. So <laughs> I had to, I had to, I, I can't resist. Easy, easy joke, I'll take it. All right, so there we are. Switch you guys over to this one. I'm just going to get this out of the way so that we can just have it done. So, <clears throat> I know I always try to give you guys as much advice as I can on here and try to give you guys all the tips and tricks, but uh, I got to put you guys out on a, a program that's available, that's been available, that's out there for the pros, by the pros, Namama, all the good jazz, probably one of the best programs out there right now. Um, if you're interested and you're serious about trying to learn how to airbrush and you really just want to take it to the next level, uh, I would suggest you go and you check out airbrushartcircus.com. I'm, I'm debating in my head, so should I give Mr. Churchill a call, so let him self-plug himself again? But uh, anyway, just go in and check it out, airbrushartcircus.com. And uh, keep an eye on it. I don't know if he's updated it yet, so you can sign up or not. But um, you know, keep keep an eye on it, refresh it, check it out. Uh, because when those classes are available, uh, they are definitely worth it. You get to walk away with some cool projects, um, and yeah, you get to learn from some very, very, very experienced people. And you get to meet them face to face and learn to them and they'll come up and, and instruct you one on one if it's necessary during the events, you know. So yeah, make sure you check it out. Airbrushartcircus.com. I don't know about the name. Don't ask me about the name. It's not my name. <laughs> so yeah. Really, if he, if, if he called it something like, I, I don't know, I, any name would honestly freaking work, so it doesn't really matter. We are not cheap, we are frugal. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, no, Chris, I'm not doing it myself because I'm cheap and I want to save money. I'm just doing it myself because I want to make sure it's done right and, and you know I only trust myself I have these issues and I want to make sure the floor is done correctly and, and you know it's just it's better just do it myself I don't want to have some stranger come in my house and you know <laughs> I'm fucking cheap we're doing it ourselves because we're cheap <laughs> <laughs> 
man, we're trying to save money, man. I'm cheap. Mm -hmm. I actually have to thank my mother-in-law because it's my mother-in-law <laughs> that decided to do all this. Um, so yeah. Shoot. Shoot, son! <laughs> Are you going? I, I'm not 100% yet. Uh, right now the plan is to go. Um, but uh, yeah, I have to check my finances and stuff. Let's see where we are in February. I want to go though. Even if it's just to show up and paint, I'm down. Like I wanted to go to the art circus in Cali again, but man, it was expensive going to the rendezvous, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. It just seems like it's it's a little bit ridiculously overpriced sometimes.
I'll be going to all the events that come up starting with the Colorado trip. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you're gonna be a force to be reckoned with once you retire. got pretty much all of that in there. And then we just have to finish up his arm or his hand and then we'll be good to go. Anybody got any cool projects they've been working on or something? I did order something today, airbrush related. And I was talking about during the last live streams, I actually looked, looked some of them up and found some cheap ones. And I could do a review for you guys and See if I could recommend them or not. But I won't spoil it until the video goes up. You get delivered tomorrow, so.
<laughs> After we get Jessica's approval, of course. Yeah, of course. And Violets. You're going to have to get Violets and be like, well, where's, where, how am I going to see my dad? <laughs> anyway, we got the start to our painting here. Kind of laid out. Now I have decisions to make. Where do I want to start? I obviously want to start with these backgrounds because I want to just have those in. So... We should probably just start on this desert side. How's that sound? You could probably get that done today and uh, come back the next day and we can get done this other side and probably start on the flames. So we can get those all up in there. I made a table to mount that new... Wait, I just finished building my spray booth in my shop. What? Nice! Nice, man. Yeah, I've been loving my little spray booth area that I made. Oof. Um, it's been it's been fantastic to just clear stuff and just put primer on stuff. It's not all over the shop. It's really nice. Really nice! <laughs> mm. Mwah. Yes, having a, having a little spray booth area. Mwah. Um, made a table to mount the new Vision Air airbrush system, but now they say the price on that system may be going up. Oh, uh, did you, you didn't order it? You made the table, but you didn't order it? That sucks. I wonder why the price is going up. So anyway. Um, let's get started here on some stuff. So, how do I want to do this? I want the skylines to kind of blend into one to another, right? So, this one's going to have the sun rays coming off the back here, right? And this one's going to have like the city lights. I want to be like little city lights coming up. The, the glow of the city, you know, kind of on top of the city back here. Um, but then I want kind of like stars back here, like little little bits of stars, you know, maybe little clouds just kind of blending in and then coming down. And this is going to be yellow on this side, and I think I want purple on this side. Or should I do blue? Blue or purple, like on the sky, obviously. Because then we could do like dark blues and dark purples down here. Maybe we could do like a purple fading into a red to an orange, and then purple fading into a blue to a light blue and then do the buildings. Hmm. And that means that this this skeleton here would have a blue fade, you know, or like a blue highlight. And then so would this guy kinda on the top here. And these on this side it would be yellow in the top of his hair here. Um, and then we can do the flames. See, the whole thing is we have to try to tie in the colors without messing up the flames because I want one set of flames to be red, orange, yellow, you know, traditional, and then these other flames can be blue, blue, green, white. That's kind of what I'm thinking on these here. And then we want some glow coming off of those, so that would put some blue and green and some yellow and red, you know, kind of on this side. And maybe we just leave the other side just regular highlighted on this side. Since there's no really like no light source, we could just leave this other side kind of just white and black and gray, maybe some cream. Okay, okay. Just having a little brainstorm session. So let's start with some purple. We start purple up here at the top. And we're not going to use purple pretty much anywhere else. Maybe we could use the purple as the pink color here, but we can leave that to the very end, adding the color that's dripping into the airbrush. We can leave that to the very end because it needs to go over the over everything. Um, yeah, let's start with some purple. So, just going to go ahead and flush this out. Where's my spray bottle? Oh, it's right here. Good, good. Yeah! 
The price of aluminum went up. Oh, man. Everything's going up right now. It's ridiculous. Um, the flames are kind of stacked one on top of it. So there's like a blue flame right here. Here, if I zoom you in. Right, you see those other lines right there? See those? That's where the blue flame is going to be. And it only comes up a little bit, but it's enough to give us a little highlight on here and maybe some across the flag. But that red flame kind of goes up into this other guy. And so that'll give us some, some nice red and orange we can do it on these guys. But at the same time, if we have the blue up on here, then that we can do some blue on this side and stuff like that. So it's, it'll have its own like variety. And since we have the blue down here, the blue green, we'll be able to you know keep some of that blue green, maybe even extend it off over into this guy and have some yellow from the flag here, the red flame. So it all kind of has, it'll have all the same kind of colors just spread out around a little bit. But anyway, let's start with some purple here. Fluorescent colors for the Mohawk. Yeah, I was kind of thinking either a hot pink or a hot green. Or hot pink and hot green stripes. I don't know. So let's start with some purple across the right side. Throw a little bit in here. I don't really need a whole lot, so I'm not mixing up in a cup. I'm just going to mix up in the airbrush. I'm just going to take a little bit of reducer in here. And it's like a tiny bit, like, like a tiny bit. Don't need a, don't need a whole lot. Just a little tiny bit. Myself out of the way. Nope. Nope. There you go. There you go. I still haven't memorized them yet, so I'm. I gotta play guessing games so I get it right. There you go. I, actually, I can just. There you go. There you go. Dang. Dang. This boy got got the cameras all set up. Yep. Start in with some purple here. Let me turn this pressure just down a little bit.
Hola Elvis uh, Fantásticos Gracias <laughs> What's up Tim, how's it going? Hit the thumbs up Thank you, thank you sir So the purple has to break right at the center of the skull, right? So all I'm going to do is take a little bit of purple. And we're just going to go off to each side. All right, so we get that nice little cut right there. But then I'm going to make it like, make it like little clouds going this way over here. thing on this side and just bring it off onto this side boom and once we add some little white highlights on these and some little more darker tones it's really really gonna come together this way and then on this side I'm gonna mix in a little bit of red into our purple in a minute and we'll start fading it down from from purple all the way back down in yellow and then we will we'll do our mountain cut which I might actually do in this purple just to start the edge and then we'll do the purple fading into uh, probably a very dark brown we'll come back and do some slightly like yellowish tan little highlights because these are mountains um, and desert mountains are are not like um, are not the same as uh, you know woodland mountains I guess they're more stony and rocky so you know, we'll, we'll get some of that in there Let's see how we have this coming up maybe we'll just do just one little one little straggler guy just down here start focusing in on this side so we'll leave this side and we'll see if we can get to it today but right now my main focus is gonna be getting this side done so this desert side you know would be nice if it was uh, you know as close to finishes as we can and this this piece right here this is where the pinstripes gonna go might add some like little scrolling or something onto the pinstripe coming down. But this is the pinstripe from the brush here. So, but anyway, let's go on and mix up some colors. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of red, dump it into our purple here. I'm gonna shake it up really good. I might actually take some of this purple out. So it's quite a bit. Shake, shake, shake it up. Cool. So now we have 
bit more of a slight maroon color. I'm just gonna kind of finish rounding off. start filling in some of these spots. Bring in some of this, this nice little shading here. Still kind of dark, so it's okay. Bring it up. We don't, I don't want to bring it over, because over here we're going to break into the blue, so we just want to keep this kind of on this side. here. Yeah, like some big, uh, what are those clouds called? Cumulus clouds? Is that what they're called? I'm trying to remember stuff. Hard to remember stuff. Right, just, just a nice little shape of them. Just kind of coming down. These are kind of, you know, just wispy in the back, but then we got the nice big cloud that's going to kind of go across there. And maybe it's going to hang out a little Learning but not spraying yet, only drawing. Right on. Thank you, thank you for being a member. Hell yeah. I thought you were airbrushing already, Tim. You know what's funny is that when I went to go take that Lumilore class at the Airbrush Rendezvous, there was a guy named Tim in the class, and I thought it was you. <laughs> I legit thought it was you. So. This just, I kind of made this kind of look, look like the mesas out in Arizona. Not yet, man. All right, cool, cool. I have an eclipse already, too. Make it a master airbrush. I mean, just start with the eclipse. What are you, 
Don't be scared. Just go. I mean, I'm, I guess the proper question would be like, what are you waiting for? What is stopping you from doing it now? I think I'll mess up cleaning an airbrush out. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel you there, but it's all about just keeping it rinsed out, keeping it clean. This, this right here is worth five, six airbrushes. If without this right here, yeah, you'll, you'll be chewing through airbrushes. Soapy water, just rinse it out when you're done, keep it nice, keep it clean. Make sure you, you pull the needle off, make sure there's nothing on there. Clean it out really, really good. Right, when you're done for the day, just clean it out good. Set it down, you're good. You don't need to take it apart completely every time. You just need to rinse out, make sure you don't let anything dry. The only time you're gonna really need to take it apart and clean it is if you let stuff dry inside of it. That's when you'll start having issues and, and stuff like that. You'll start having like little little hard clumps that are gonna release themselves from the walls of the inner metal and then you know they get stuck on your nozzle or it just starts it just starts causing you issues. So the main important thing is to not let stuff dry in your airbrush. So you just gotta keep it clean, keep it maintained. When you're done, you know, just clean it out. Worth taking the five minutes, and you know, like when I'm done here, I have my other two airbrushes. They're just sitting there with reducer. You know, I just stop, what I, you know, before I walk away, rinse it out really good and everything. Maybe even get some reducer, shake it up, make sure that there's, the reducer stays clear. You know, because the reducer will mix with the paint, and if it keeps coming back colored, it means there's still something in there. So just make sure it's clean, and then set it down, and you're good to go. I like leaving reducer in it because I'm going to come back today and I can just add a little bit of paint and it's ready to go, you know, so it's kind of that whole thing. Anyway, I'm going to switch off to some red. I'm going to dump out all this paint in here, but I'm not going to clean it out, right? So there's still, see how there's still some of that purple in there? Just a tad bit because we want it to tint the red. So I'm going to do is just mix up a little bit of red. And some blue. And some blue too. Like blue tips. Blue tips, alright. <laughs> okay. Don't have too much fun. Oh, wait, where is the belt? This one's coming down. You gonna give me a kiss before you go or no? Yeah. Oh, snap, Tim Miner. Thank you, thank you, sir. No, you the man. No, you. You the man. <laughs> Yeah, the, mine's the same way. I do I, when I'm really focused. You don't see me chewing on it. I chew on my tongue. <laughs> the boss is in the house. Yep, there you go. She is too. I'm hiding. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. Love you. Who's that? Chris. That's the dude from the Witch Call. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm waiting for you. No. You're just like right 
brushing me out. It looks super extra bright out there. thinking here. I just want some some of this red right here. Smiley guy.
What's the weather like out there? I think it's like 60 degrees today. It's not too cold. It's warm enough that the heaters haven't really kicked on at all, so. It's not too bad. Can't really complain. I'm gonna use some wicked yellow. Now this is not opaque yellow. I'm gonna use opaque yellow when we get to the flames and stuff. And I kind of preemptively did some little, you know, some of the red highlights that are gonna be coming up here. Um, but that's again, just kind of how we did the black as a way of kind of helping the shading just take a shape as we go. The same with this red. I'm not gonna use the same yellow and orange and stuff that we're gonna be using here on the side to do this. And I'm gonna do yellow first and then I'm gonna come back with the orange and fade in with the orange. A little different technique than what I usually do. I know usually you'll see me just fade all the way from one color spectrum to the other side. But uh, again, I'm just adding yellow to uh, what was left of the red in here, which is gonna give us more of an orange, you know, so it's not gonna be true, true yellow just yet, but it's gonna be more, more yellow than orange, so. Went to a fair and a lady was using stencils for face paint airbrush, and I almost said something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. It's all of that thing about uh, don't don't try to take another man's lunch. All right, if you see somebody doing something, it's, it's just, just let them freaking do it. And then if you feel like you could do better, then just do better than them. Um, you know, go and set up somewhere and just do it better. And people will notice. Um, but yeah, like a lot of people use stencils. I like using stencils for body paint sometimes. It makes it faster and easier depending on like at a fair especially. Like you don't really have all that time to spend on somebody. You're just trying to get them in and out. And uh, if you do like a multi-layer stencil design. So I've seen like, um, I've seen people where they do like butterflies or something like that. But then they'll, they'll have a stencil for the main outline of the butterfly. And then they'll put another one in, which adds like the first layer of colors. And then the second one, you know, will usually be like the outline, like the black and the actual body of the butterfly, you know, and you know, it just makes it easy. And once, once you're in the shit, right? And you're the one airbrushing it, it it's, you look at it from the other side and then you're like, oh, I, I see where they were using stencils. Because, you know, if you're not using stencils, it's going to take so long. And then you have this line of people and you're missing out on money. And, you know, the whole point of setting up at a fair is to, you know, make money, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, like, then, then you're like, oh, okay, well, it makes sense. She's just trying to work fast. So, yeah, I, I, like, I've used stencils. I have nothing against stencils. I use stencils, like, I... I set up a bunch of stencils for the shop that I just helped set up over for D. Um, you know, there's a bunch of custom stencils that we have that are just, you know, specific um, for the designs and stuff, so. 28 degrees, ah! Jesus Christ. Yeah, so, you know, I can't knock the stencils. The only way I would have a problem with it is if it was like she was using stencils and it still came out looking like crap. You know what I mean? Like the whole point of the stencils is to make something nice. You know, and it, if it doesn't look nice when you're done, then it's defeating the whole purpose. And what's the point of you using stencils? Now, I myself like freehand work like this because I like I just like pushing my skill and, and controlling the airbrush in, in you know the most precise manner right I could I could have drawn this up scanned it into the computer cut it out with the plotter and just you know had all this stuff pre-cut and it just been going peeling piece by piece and, and the shading and the colors and this and that but 
it's not that I don't feel like there's no skill in that because there is skill involved. You have to do a lot of stuff and prep and stuff. I feel like this allows me to just lay it out there the way I want, right? Like I'm not like if I want to change something or do something different, I'm not locked into like oh well, but I already did the design this way. You know, I could kind of play off the hip a little more um, and just have a little more fun with it. And that's kind of why I like doing more freehand type stuff. Um, I feel like it's just slightly more original. It can't be copied or redone, you know. Like uh, people could take it and, and, and get a little inspiration from it and try to do something different with it. But, you know, the original will be mine, you know. It's like not. That's, that's kind of what I like. Take it, take it as you want. I don't know. Some people like having all the stenciled look, and and, and I, I could I like sometimes the way some stuff looks really sharp, but sometimes I feel like too like it just looks so. I don't want to use the word cookie cutter, but it, it like that's the best way. <laughs> that's the best way to describe. It just feels like you were just you know paint by numbers kind of thing. Um, anyway, got the yellow in there. Now I'm gonna. That was the regular wicked yellow, not the opaque. So now I'm gonna use opaque orange. And we're only gonna reduce this down just a, just, just a tad, just to help it flow through here. And again, just throwing just a little bit in there. the challenge that's my main problem I refuse to use stencils takes longer without them you nailed it it's about pushing yourself yeah exactly I mean you know I know lots of airbrush artists that you know everything they do is stenciled and pre-cut designs and there's nothing wrong with that that's what they like doing that's what you know their customers like or whatever I don't know I just, I know I like doing this. I feel like it's more, it's more fulfilling to me for one, right? Cause I feel like, yeah, like I used my talent, you know, for that. Um, so there's that whole deal. Like, I don't know. Everybody's different strokes for different folks. You know, you do you, I'm gonna do me. And let's just keep it pushing. Keep it a push, keep it a pump, keep it a move. Paul Tarchala, oh nice, nice with the little hippo guy. I see you. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, the the stencils can be really helpful when you're learning, right? So like a lot of my how to airbrush videos start off with a stencil. Like they start off with a predetermined design, and you're trying to achieve that. Right, so that's the whole point of, of those videos. Um, who else? Uh, I mean, Scott McKay, like his instructional videos, start off the same. It's like a, a design, and then you're trying to get to replicate that design. But once, once you're actually like, I know even Scott, like he knows how to airbrush freehand, right? But most of what you see of Scott is him trying to teach. So you know, a lot of times you'll see him, and he's working off of those things. Now I know he does use that a lot for his um, actual artwork and stuff. But I know I've seen him actually throw in a lot of freehand stuff around it, um, which looks really good, you know. But yeah, like for instructionals and stuff like that, the the stencils I feel like they, there's the best way to go. Like having a, a nice predetermined, a pre-cut design makes it much easier to teach um, somebody because you know where you're going. You know, they know where they're they're trying to get, and you know where you're trying to get them, and you know it's all just following the steps you know and, and once they get the steps down then they could uh you know okay well i did the steps on this painting i could go and i want to do that i could i could draw it and then just follow my steps to get to where i wanted wanted to look you know so i would never set up near you yikes i mean there's there's lots of airbrush artists around here um yeah, but I don't know. 
I said it before, I'll say it again. We all have different styles. So you can't compare yourself to me. The only way I find it, if I would find it offensive, is if you set up around me or near me, and then you like take me as a threat or something. So if I come and, hey man, nice shot, blah, blah, blah. And then you're just like, oh, what are you doing in here? Or you're just coming in to see what, you know, what, what we got going on. It's like, uh, yeah, dude, it's like, you got a shot. What, what do you want me to just, like, not come in and say hi? Like, you know, that, that'd be the whole thing. And I, I, for the most part, don't really care if anybody sets up near me. I'm, I'm, I'm nearing that point where I'm pretty, I'm like, I'm pretty close to just being done. Right, like I, I don't, I don't want to be like for the public anymore. Like I've done my share of events, markets, all that. Now, private events, I will probably still do because those are a lot of fun, right? Like bar mitzvahs, birthday parties, that kind of stuff. I like doing that. Obviously, I'm not cheap, so I get invited to some some nice, high quality parties. Um, but like going up to events at like uh, you know lowrider shows or what have you um i'm pretty much done <laughs> like i'm done i i'm i'm like this close to just closing closing the doors on, on customers just coming in and just focusing on stuff like this there's a reason i'm doing this right like if i wanted to just be for the public i could still be going to the mall every day it was my decision to pull out and it was just it felt unfulfilling it, it felt like i just I was going backwards. It felt like instead of uh, you know elevating myself to an airbrush, like you know I don't want to say a master, but like the next level of where my career would go, I felt like I was going back. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where I feel with my artwork too. I just want to focus on the artwork right now. And it's kind of hard to do that when people bring you stuff and they're just like, oh, I just want a skull with a, a name, you know. And obviously, it's funny saying that because we're doing skulls, but, you know, the, you guys know what I mean. You know, or a heart or the name or whatever, you know, and it's just the same repetitive type stuff. I don't get to have any creative input on a lot of stuff, um, even on like motorcycles and shit. People will bring motorcycles and then just be like... I want this and then you'd be like oh yeah we could change it no changes I just want it like that and yeah it could, it could get like bleh, bleh. so I just I'm at that stage where I just kind of want to paint I want to paint for myself I want to paint stuff that I think is cool that I want to see and when a customer comes in or somebody comes in asking for work I just I'm gonna throw what my time is worth and if they don't want to pay it then they don't want to pay it and, and that's the end of it I don't I'm not sad about it I don't really care I'm going to keep painting and yeah, they'll go somewhere else and be happier or whatever they're going to do. I don't really care at this point. I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm at that point, basically. <laughs> it's not, I don't even call it burnout because, you know, it, I'm, I just want to progress. I want to, I want to, I want to keep it pumping. I want to keep it moving. <laughs> and I feel like it just doing the same old stuff. I'm just stuck in this rut, you know. So it's just, it was kind of that whole thing where I was just, I needed to make a choice and I made a choice and I did it and I'm standing by it and this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Mm. <laughs> um, anyway, let's focus in on what we're doing here. So first off, we have the orange, right? In the airbrush here. I'm gonna take some white, some opaque white and we're gonna make like a creamsicle color. We're going to start laying some opaques and some different tones over our thing. We're starting with a nice pastel -y orange. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of at that point where I, I feel like I put in my time doing all them events, doing all that stuff, and now I just want to focus on doing what I want to do. I don't know if that's so bad or not or whatever. And yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if I seen somebody at this point set up near me, I'd probably throw work your way. So, uh, the thing for round shape she's using called the splat. Uh, you're talking about my shields? These? This is actually part of the real flame kit available at mikesbrush.com. 
Go check it out. Mikesbrush.com. Uh, hey. Mikesbrush.com. Real flame stencil. It also works really good as a curve and as an edger for a lot of round shapes and stuff like that. But the, the main purpose of these are what they were designed for, what I designed them for, was to make flames easy to do. So. What makes you feel good in order to create. Yeah, exactly. And, um... Yeah, I want to be able to create some nice stuff. And yeah, a lot of the people who were coming to me just didn't want that nice of stuff. They wanted stuff, which is good, right? Like, like I like painting for money, so I'll take some money if you want something painted. But um, also at the same time, it was super unfulfilling and it also painted me into a light that I just didn't like, like where people were going, oh, he paints that way. That's the stuff he does. And it's just like, no, I could do more. I could do realistic. I could do this. And I, and you guys that have seen me and been around, you guys know that I could pretty much, whatever the freak it is, I could, I could paint it, right? But it's hard to explain that to a customer, you know, when all they've seen is this certain kind of work for me because that's their friends or something, right? Their friends got some work done and now... I have to, you know, convince this guy, like, no, we could do other stuff. So, yeah. And that's where I was talking about, like, being stuck. So it feels like you're just, people take you a certain way and that's not even what you want to do or portray. So it's kind of hard. I was already having troubles with this since before I went to the airbrush rendezvous. It's kind of something I've been trying to deal with and trying to find like my ground of where I want to be. Um, and I honestly just going with the flow right now, just letting them see what happens happen. And yeah, but uh, before I left or before I started all those paintings for California, I, I did pretty much close the shop. You know, I stopped taking in work and yeah and now people are not bringing in work which is like I'm fine <laughs> I've had a few people message me about getting something done one guy wanted his lowrider done and stuff and I threw a price out there and he said yeah yeah I'll be there on Tuesday blah 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 and Tuesday came around and yeah no guy no work no nothing I'm not sad, I don't really care. It would have been great if he would have actually brought it in. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. So. <sighs> yeah. I prime sanded paint to do it all over again. I got burnout too, so I needed a hobby. Away from being forced to, from doing it, I love doing it. I guess, yeah.
Yeah, exactly. Like you get you get labeled. That's exactly it. Right? So like I like I like the like the, the anime cars that I've done that I own that we have. I like the cars like my wife's car, the prince car, we did my stepdaughter's car, the Sailor Moon, my Camaro is Dragon Ball Z. Right? And so we go cruising around with those. But then I heard somebody say, oh, that's all you can do, though, is like cartoons, not, not realistic stuff. Even though the freaking Prince car has realistic paintings on it, right? Like, it has graphics, it has realistic paintings, it has, like, flake, candy, all that stuff. People just want to paint you into a box. And then that's what they go and tell everybody else. And it's just like, ah. Is that the all? Is that all the new Createx mic? Uh, so it's some of the opaques and some of the some of the regular Wicked Yellow here. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> cabinets! Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I've seen one airbrush artist use marbles in his bottles to mix paint better. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's good. It's a good tip. Dread going to work. Yeah, I, I guess I didn't really dread going to work, but I think the the correct thing I was is me trying to. Um, progress like what what I feel would be a good progression and 
yeah, doing doing the same thing as I did before is insanity, not progression. It's like literally the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And yeah, that's that's basically what I was doing, and I didn't want to do it again. And something I haven't done is just this, where I just I'm just painting because I want to paint. <laughs> like. You know, like, yeah, I always painted because I wanted to paint, but, you know, never had the chance to just for myself kind of thing. some pastel yellow. One of the guys that hangs with us does hand furniture. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool though, you just start for one reason and then you end up just liking it. The thing is too is that kind of once you get good with it, like good at using the tool, you start realizing like all the stuff that you could be doing with it. And you're just like, oh well I could use this for more than just, you know, touching up little spots or whatever. I could actually use this for, for fine stuff or stuff that's different. That's a pretty good idea too. Metal beads. Are you running more than one airbrush? Uh, right now we're only running one airbrush at a time. I'm just kind of mixing up uh, a custom color for, for every tone that I'm doing here. So I took a little bit of opaque white, a little bit of opaque, uh, what is this yellow? Opaque bismuth vanadate yellow. gonna get a really nice really nice light yellow in here just to blend in this last little bit So here's, see these, that's like a perfect example of how the black, that little bit of preemptive black just, you know, kind of helps the colors just kind of blend in there. Now we're still going to go back with a little bit of white here in a second. We're going to add some smoke or maybe some dust. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. It's the desert. 
I'll say smoke because I'm going to do a little house here and maybe we'll do a little chimney with some smoke coming out and then that way it'll make sense here. telling people to stop doing bad shit and they still do it over and over <laughs> I don't even remember what I was talking about but yeah I guess yeah uh, yeah bear, I mean ball bearings is probably the best way to go I don't know how how hard you're shaking your bottle but if you're breaking marbles inside of it you probably don't have to go that hard you don't have to go that hard in the paint son The whole thing is to only put one marble. You only need one. <laughs> if you put more than one, then yeah, they're going to be hitting up against each other. They're probably not going to make a good, good thing inside your paint, you know. But just one marble, as long as you got a, a plastic paint bottle, you know, it should be fine. If you're shaking it so crazy that the, the plastic paint bottles is chipping the glass, I mean... <laughs> Boy, you got an arm, boy. You you got that shaking down, boy. It's looking pretty good. Just those little little bit of layers of clouds and stuff, and we're blending them off into the into the black here. It's gonna look really nice. What if you lost your marbles all, oh, man? Then you wouldn't have no marbles! <laughs> I only use craft paint right now, but I won't be using it for airbrushing. Yeah, yeah. That's what I use at work for touch-up paint. Works good on conventional varnish and lack of finish. <laughs> that happened years ago, he says. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, yes. I lost my marbles a long time ago. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, pretty good. Now I just want to dump this out. And we just need some good old, that good old deep dark red. So I'm mixing in a little bit of purple, a little bit of red. We want like a deep dark maroon, reddish. And we're just gonna add a little bit of details in here. We can use crafting acrylic tin, just need a reducer for it, yep. Well, let's stick to Lexan. Yeah, I, yeah, I've, I've never used acrylic on Lexan, so I can't say. I know Createx is pretty much water-based acrylic, but um, there is other stuff in Createx which makes it adhere. It's not just acrylic paint, you know, that's why it's not advertised as such, but. Got this. We reduced it pretty good. Createx is used a lot in RC bodies, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, Createx is not, it's not just regular acrylic. I know you can use Createx on Lexan, and it sticks really good. I have my own RC bodies that are still, you know, I painted a little while ago. They still look really good, so. Thank you. 
Yeah, if you if you mix Createx with 4050, like it's really boy. It's really nice. Really, really nice. Right down to 4050 on my list. Yeah, 4050, get yourself a, a little Createx, you know, like paint set, like one of those little starter sets. A little eight ounce thing of uh, 4050. And yeah, it opens up a lot of possibilities, just having a little bit like that. Don't forget, Createx is kind of like acrylic too, and you can mix up your own colors. So if you order the basic color set, you can always mix up any other colors you need from there, so. Okay, I need to stand up. Yep, yep. Yeah, Createx is really great giving advice and stuff. Um, if you want really specific stuff, like um, there is data sheets for the lines of paint. So you could go to Createx Tech dot com create text t e c h create text tech dot com and on there you could find like all the information for all the different types of paint and the proper ratios and, and applications possible or that they've tested because there's probably still more possible ways of using it but I've talked to Dennis uh, De Lorenzo, the, the main like uh, 
chemist over at Createx, and he says, yeah, we, we really don't step in and tell people how to use their paint because a lot of times they come up with something that we hadn't thought of or they find stuff out that, that we hadn't thought of, you know, when we were designing the paint. But if it works for them, then, you know, there ain't no point in trying to stop people from, from doing something that works. So it's always nice experimenting with Createx it does it sticks to a lot of stuff once it's dry it's it's super strong so don't ever be afraid to experiment with it Last but not least, I'm going to use a little bit of white. We're going to add some smoke kind of coming off of here. I'm going to add a little bit of sun rays coming off of the mountains here. And then just like a little smoky aura, you know, from all the smoke from the house here. Kind of good in that back. And I think we'll, we'll call that side done after that. Unless we think of something later on while we're working on, on the rest of the painting, maybe we can come back and, you know, we find something else maybe we want to put like an antenna tower or something up here you know i don't know maybe like one of those big uh windmills you know the big electrical ones something like that anyway i'm gonna dump this out and clean out the airbrush pretty good because i'm gonna use white i don't want it to be tinted in any way You're very welcome, Tim. Good luck. I hope you start painting soon. <laughs> 124th scale. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. An eighth of an inch. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that might be something you might be actually painting with, like, a little tiny paintbrush. You know, you might want to airbrush in some little fades or shadows or stuff like that, but the main the main bee's knees might have to be with a paintbrush, like all any detail. Alright, so I'm just put in some white here. Yep, that's the best way to do it. Just order like the, the primary colors and then mix from there. And as long as you got a pretty good idea of where the paint's supposed to, how paint mixes, you should be pretty good. So I'm not reducing this white, so I'm turning up the paint, the, the paint, turning up the air pressure just a little bit so that it gets sucked up just, just a little bit nicer. You start with the smoke here. that little guy back there you know he's hiding back in that fog smog I'll bring it all the way out here bam simple you could add a little white highlight and some of these here Details is always a uh... there you go. 
little Tape coming handy. Probably gonna do one ray right there. slightly just going off boom All right take them off in the same order you put them on move over to the next highlight which will probably be about here All right, and we want it to kind of go up this way bam cover up the bottom bloom so slightly it doesn't need to be super aggressive and we'll do one more right about here oh my gosh ah, this whole thing has moved There you go, I think we have one side. I like the way that looks right there so far. Step back, step back and look at it, you know. Looks pretty good. So maybe we'll come back once we got uh, more of this other stuff done. And maybe we'll add a little bit darker tone just to these mountains. Maybe just a little bit on this fencing and this house. Just a tad bit, maybe darker. I don't know. But I think right there it looks really good. I really think we uh, we achieved what we were trying to do. There you go. So if you just focus on this. That's what I'm doing. I mean, and that whole thing is about the size of my hand. I cover all of it with my size of my hand right there. So, so yeah, guys, I think we're going to stop it there for today. We'll come back next time. On, next time on Mike's Brush. Will he make it to the green? <laughs> oh, jeez. There you go. So far, though, it's looking... I mean, I would wear that on a shirt. <laughs> Once I, I could already see it done, so I'm like already excited. I'm like, oh wait, I already know how I want that to look. And then I'm gonna go over here. Oh yeah, and it's gonna look really good. So I'm already excited. Um, but that right there looks dope. Nice little background effect. We're gonna do this side next time, 
and then we'll probably start on the flames. Uh, and once we have all the colors of the flames and stuff in place, then we can focus down on just the skeletons, getting the skeletons all nice and colored in and making them look highlighted from all the sides. And we can do them all at once because we're going to use about the same old colors. And then at the very end, we can come back, we can do the pinstripe brush, the airbrush, and the spray gun, and the banner, and just focus those in at the very end. Make sure we get all our chrome and our striping and everything just perfect um, but yeah so for next time you guys can expect me to actually do this background area on this side over here which is a cityscape we have a desert scene back here with the mountains and then we'll do the cityscape back on this side um, and we'll, we'll we'll try to get that cityscape and all the flames done in next time so yeah Thank you guys again, always, for hanging out. Uh, shout out to Createx, um, you know, as always, for making awesome paint. Shout out to uh, Airbrush Art Circus. Make sure if you want to learn, go ahead and get yourself signed up, airbrushartcircus.com. Keep an eye on it. They will update it for the next classes, I believe, are February 2nd, something like that. Don't quote me. I'm not really sure. Um, but they're in Baton Rouge. It's going to be great. It's at the Baton Rouge Community College. Brand new facility. It's going to be awesome. You don't want to miss out if you want to learn it's the best place to learn um what else uh stencils if you're looking for some stencils make sure you check out mikesbrush.com tell all your friends about it they're nice cheap economical stencils that also help the channel so if you like seeing content like this um you know it helps pay for my time airbrushing so you can learn I don't have mind an I don't mind answering questions as often as I as long as I know you guys are kind of helping out support the channel. I'll come on here, answer all your questions, give you all the information, give it, give it, give it, take it, take it. Um, and then uh, yeah, thank you guys for all the support as always. Uh, thanks for watching, and yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Later, everybody. Later, later.